Ladies and gentlemen, Rocket League decision making, here we go. Today I have a special guest. This guy is known as Michael. Michael, period, just Michael. He is a champ three with just about 2,160 hours. Thank God that's not specific. Uh, and the important thing about Michael is that it is believed that he is the highest competitive ranked cripple in North America. Michael, how are you today? I'm doing just fine. How about you? Doing amazing. Can you do me a favor real quick and just explain why you're a cripple? Like, what is it that you have? Um, I have arthroposis, two variations. One is aomyoplasia. The other one is multiplex congenitania, along with scoliosis. Um, with scoliosis, it's a simpler one to explain. I have a 90-degree curve in my back. And uh, with the two arthroposis, my arms are rotated 90 degrees at the elbow. My wrist is stuck downwards at a 90 degree angle, and uh, I'm incapable of walking. And how I compensate for my arms and hand problems is I'm capable of playing with my arms on the opposite side of the controller. So I have generally standard controls, but I play with my arms on the opposite sides. That way I can have my thumbs on top to be able to do all the heavy button pressing. Unreal, man. Here you are as a champ three in Rocket League. But that's what we're here for. We're here to talk about Rocket League, so let's jump into some of these questions. Number one, Michael, what is your biggest strength in Rocket League? I mean, I've, I'll say I've generally been a more intelligent player for a long time. I've been working hard on mechanics recently, but in general, I'd say I'm probably kind of just a smart rotational player at okay. the core. All right, and then flip side of that, what is your biggest weakness? I'll probably say kind of anxiety. I uh, will get very anxiety if it's a close overtime and it, I'm just not great for a clutch factor. But that's one of, one of the things that I kind of work on. We're going to see if we can get you a clutch moment in this game right here. Um, now here's, here's a good question. Do you warm up before you start playing? Absolutely. <laughs> My right, hands is... feel like absolute bricks before I play. So um, to kind of loosen them up I'll do normally a bit of hand stretching and then about 30 minutes of warming up. All right. What is one thing that you wish you knew when you started playing Rocket League? I wish I knew what control set I would go with. I start. I went with uh, keyboard and mouse for my first 200 hours, and I'm glad I, when I switched over to controller. And then I really wish I knew that I would change my control set to this, just because it took a while to be able to figure all this out. Okay. All right, and then what got you into Rocket League, and then what's made you stay so far? Well, I just upgraded from a very old Mac, and I was able to download Steam, and I was like, wow. I Listen, I know I'm not great at these uh, gun games, but this one car soccer game looks really neat. And I played Rumble for my first 100 hours, and I absolutely loved the game. And oh. then uh, now, I just really like the competitive feel. You know, I, I'll play other games, but none of them give the same competitive feel that Rocket League individually gives. Okay. Great answer. So you mentioned that you feel that you're more of an intelligent player. Let's talk about some style for that. How do you like to play? Do you like to be aggressive? Do you like to be back? Do you, is it a combination of both? What's you? I try to best adapt to my teammate. If they are really great at shooting and they have a bit of a tendency to stay up, I'm happy to stay back and just feed balls into them and, you know, be there in case a rebound happens. So, uh, Michael, we've been talking now for a, f a few weeks, I'll say that, and you've mentioned quite a few times that you want to do something with some type of more competitive Rocket League, if that being Indie Gaming League or other, you know, competitive, more competitive scenes throughout the game. Would you ever consider trying to make a push into the pro bubble? Would that ever cross your mind? Um, if I'm good enough, yeah, I'm most definitely planning once I'm going off to college to join a collegiate team. 
just because that's kind of a semi-pro area, of which I believe I'm capable of rising up to that occasion. But um, if I was able to get good enough to be able to go in the pro semi-pro bubble, I'd love to do that. All right. That was the perfect answer for this next question, because I have written down that you are an incredibly positive person, dude. How does that help with Rocket League? It's just a mentality thing. You know, I have friends who have a really hard time keeping a cool head, so you kind of just give them some basic, hey, listen, it's all right, everyone makes mistakes, you know. I could have done this better, you could have done this better. You know, we all, we all just hanging out here. All right, now here we are at the very end. This is it. You can only choose one. Mechanics or positioning? Positioning. Why? I feel like with perfect positioning and just rudimentary mechanics, you are very capable of getting up to higher ranks. But just mechanical, there's no way that you're able to pass somewhere like Diamond. So uh, That is a bold statement. Okay. Well, you, I mean, you see these freestylers who are using minimal brains and mostly just mechanics, and they're stuck in diamond, but I have friends who are mechanical bricks and just love sitting around in champ two and three. You didn't have to call me out like that. Michael, great questions, great answers, I love it. We're gonna take just one second for everyone else, but next time you and I are talking, we're gonna be watching your replay back, checking out some key moments. How excited for that are you? Well, there's only <laughs> one way to find out, right? Perfect, let's jump into that right now. Earlier in the episode, Michael talked about how in overtime or stressful moments, sometimes he freezes up. Here we are, and make sure you pay attention. Michael, here we are, let's check out some key moments. Are you nervous about this at all? Not at all. Not at all. Are you lying to me right now? <laughs> what? Are you lying to me right now? Uh, yes and no. Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, here's the good news. First key moment coming up not too far away. I know one of the things that you and I talked about that you were a little nervous for is uh, you may or may not have had some open misses. Uh, first goal that we're going to get, though, is you definitely not missing an open net. We're going to watch that here in about 15 seconds. That ball's going to cut across. Let me ask you. So... Playing with someone that's, you know, a little bit lower rank than you, does that give you pause? Are you a little bit more conservative? Um, I just kind of let you do whatever you plan on doing, and I will play a base off of that. It's okay. kind of a bit of the same sense when you're solo queuing, because okay. I don't know the full extent of what you can and can't hit. Okay. So I'll generally trust you, especially if you're to call out, like, hey, I got this. Okay. But if you don't, then I'm just going to figure out what you're doing first. Perfect. That leads us right here in a key moment number one. And I'm genuinely curious about this. I want to figure out what you're doing here because this is all about decision making, right? This ball is coming off back wall. What are mm -hmm. you thinking in this situation? I'm thinking that I see your car in the back there and I know you just got full boost from the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make sure that this guy has at least space as possible. That way he can't start a dribble while also allowing you to get back. So I'm probably going to try to stall out here, allow myself to get a better hold of this ball just to make sure that you get back in case I do not get this ball. Okay, let's watch it. That's going to go by. And I'm going to ask, were you happy with the decision that you made? Kind of what, what almost appears as a bit of a no challenge. You, yeah, you definitely I mean, stalled, but... I liked my concept there. I don't. I just didn't execute it well enough. Okay. You know, I pulled back a bit too hard All on right. the break, so... Well, that was a great demo dodge right there. One of the things that, you know, I know from playing with you for the last few weeks is you uh, you do offer some coaching. Is it weird kind of analyzing your own replay with someone else in your ear? Um, I mean, I just normally analyze myself for just certain, you know, losses. A lot of it is just I know what I'm supposed to do, but I just fail to execute in the moment. Okay. But. Is that a debate of mechanics versus positioning? Um, no, it's just, I got a brain, just gotta get my hands to, you know, do that whole button pressing thing. You know what, uh, I think if anyone understands that, that's you. I like that pop there, I wish that I was a little bit closer, it allowed you to follow. Um, and then one more question before we get into key moment number two, because we're about 40 seconds away, but how often do you watch your replays back? I normally try to watch 
either one of the beginning of my previous session just to kind of get a good idea, or I'll watch one of the end if I'm kind of just having time to leisure around. Okay. So I'm gonna try to make sure I get one in a day, if not more. Like if I feel like I went from playing really good to all of a sudden doing horrible. So. One a day is interesting. That save attempt right there, that was almost a key moment as well. But let's talk about this one coming up. Ten seconds away. We're going to see this ball pop. And I'm going to set it up where we're going to watch your car air roll. And that's really what's going to prompt this key moment. Now, ball out. Popped up. Here it is. I want to know right here. I'm, I'm even, let me see if I could time it just right. There we go. Now we see, we see the air roll. What's going on in your mind in this situation well i know you're recovering but you're not fully committed to the recovery uh that happy, happy little trees guy is going straight to the right wall meaning that he has no chance of getting back the guy in the back in the back is on his way back but i believe that if i'm able to get it just to the top corner i have a fair chance of out beating him at worst case scenario i get a poor shot he still has to waste his boost that he will just be collecting here to be able to get this leading you to be able to add pressure and me to be able to support you from there Okay. Now, the reason I bring this up is because what I have written down and what you explained are definitely two different things, and I was curious about that. So, my second part of this question is, was this supposed to be a banger, or was that a pass? Because it was an amazing pass. Um, I might have thought better to be pass in that situation. Honestly, hindsight, I probably should have made it a banger because both people were in the same corner that you were in. Okay. And so it was just slightly more risky. Uh, ignore that. Just... Uh, but, yeah, no, that, that is a good pass either way, but yeah. that was hindsight. I probably should have done what I said I should have done. Okay. All right. Good to know. That's uh, the best part of the series is watching these decisions kind of play back after the fact. And then not not necessarily thinking of it in a positioning or a mechanical standpoint, but more of a decision-making of what, what could that one moment have been different. Well, we got three key moments to go. And the third key moment is... Probably my favorite key moment that you've done. Uh, so right here, I want to know. This I'm going to play it one more second. Well, we're going to watch Grim Dismeister, D Meister, old G GD. He's going to pop up real quick. I want to know right here where you are in this corner. What are you thinking in this situation? I saw you rotating in behind me almost a half second ago, meaning that it's most logical for me to just get this ball out into place that you can play off of it, or maybe if I'm able to beat him here, I can get it in place probably close to that mid boost where I'm able to take him out of the play. So okay, um, I will. I will, I'll give you a warning. So you're actually going to play this very patient. That's also a good idea. That's also That's a very good idea. That he did, you know, because possibility is if he goes instantly for this, he can hit this to the corner, meaning that you are most definitely going to be the next one to this ball. Mm-hmm. So, let's play it out, and then I'm going to ask you if you're happy. He's going to go up. He's actually going to miss. You just gave a little bunny hop there. Played so patient. I was going for the ball. Okay. I was, my intention was going for the ball until I see him aiming for the side. Okay. The moment I realize he's missing the ball, so it's after the jump, I realize he's missing the ball, okay. meaning that I have no reason to panic there, and I have complete possession of the ball. But if he was to go for it and have an accurate jump, I would have most definitely gone up and try to block it from being a threatening shot on that from his teammate. Okay. And I think that's the perfect answer in that situation. You said that you knew that you had a teammate behind you. You said that you knew that you could be patient in that situation, um, that you didn't have to rush it. And, honestly, dude, like, that moment for me is primo. It's, like, perfect. I, I, I absolutely loved As soon as I watched it, I was like, that, I'm putting that one in. That's great. Last key moment of regular time, just a few seconds away, and this is probably your moment of mechanical genius. So right here, we're going to see this ball come over. I want to know, this ball is about to land on your car. What's going through your mind right now? I pushed up a little bit too far, and I was hoping that if you were to lose a 50, it was going to go down. So I started turning back before realizing that if you're not most definitely not going to be able to get to this before Grim will get a good touch on it. So what I need to do is I need to take possession of this ball and keep it away from him long enough for you to be able to get comfortably back okay. and quite possibly build an offensive okay. pressure. And you are going to do that. So this mechanical skill right here happens so quickly that I think the best way to explain it, and you're probably going to agree, is just uh, just like it just worked. It was just I could like, explain it, but yeah, sure. 
So uh, we're going to see you kind of pop, half lip, catch. Happy Little Trees is going to be there. He's going to read the play very well. So I'm going to ask you, are you happy with how that came off? But essentially in two parts. So are you happy with the actual mechanic of you catching it, half flipping it, and popping it back? How Mechanical to wise, I very yeah. much could have done an earlier jump, allow my car to hit further into the ground, leaving my half flip, keeping the ball closer to me, causing me to have some sort of 50 50. Assuming Happy Little Trees does read this. If he doesn't read it, I have a nearly open net, only maybe one person doing a hard rotate back to take, over, pay, take past that. Okay. And then, you know, obviously part two, I think you just answered that as well. Are you happy with how it came off in the larger sense where Happy Little Trees was there a little bit more prepared? But I think you answered that. So, that's four key moments down. You, I, I mean, we played this game 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, something like that. Do you think you know the fifth moment? Uh, the ending maybe? But I don't know, there's very well could be a lot of small things that I'm not ready for. Okay. I might sneak something in right right real quick. Good pressure. Let's go to overtime. Perfect. Now, your champ three. Overtime, is that still building pressure? Or do you think that you're like comfortable at this point in overtime? Overtime is kinda just uh I need to make sure that I'm not panicking. And after that, I need to make sure that I'm playing just a little bit more passive in case I have a teammate who is to have a panicky decision here and then. Another open that miss. <laughs> there was a few. Well, here's the good news, though. Key moment number five is going to see us get the win. I'm not spoiling anything because everyone's already seen the beginning of the video. This one's close. I'm going to say your teammate is so bummed he missed us. I tried to get it around him. I just couldn't get it to come off. But here it is, key moment number five. That ball's up in the air. It's coming down. I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to catch it. What are you thinking in this situation, Michael? I'm paying attention to where everyone is. So I see Happy Little Trees. He's most definitely going to be the first one challenging this since Grim is still on his way back. But I do know that Grim is going to be contesting, I'll say, probably the right half of the net. So my goal here is to do a catch and then try to just first play around Happy Little Trees. Make sure I take at least one of them out of play, leaving you in a situation that couldn't be worse than a neutral one. And then after that, if I'm able to retain possession after getting around Happy Little Trees, here, I, you know, there's a couple of options I can get around him. I can try taking this hard left, faking him out. I can try taking it to the right and then doing a drift cut. I can try going for a straight pop over, although that one's probably the worst of the decisions. And then after that, it's just I need you to be able to figure out where you need to be after this play. I know I'm high on boost. So any recovery I get, I'll probably be able to stay back enough that you can feel comfortable pushing up. Crushing it. Let's play it out. Great catch right there. Beats the one. Just misses number two. Teammates up. This is Rocket League. We get the win. And they both left absolutely immediately. So would you do anything different in that situation? Do you want to be um, the one to win it? Or does that work? Well, in the mechanical sense, my current goal was to... When I got past the first person, I did that pretty dang good. You know, I could have maybe been a bit more concise in my movements, but it was good, and, you know, I was happy with that movement. Second guy, my my goal currently was to get it into the top corner. So I tried, you know, moving out a little bit, then rotating my car, then popping it to the corner. I didn't quite move out far enough, meaning that it ended up bouncing off his car. And the moment it bounced up, I was happy to let anyone else, you know, in this case you, get a good touch on the ball. And I knew you had a pretty fair chance. So, you know, not saying I wanted it, but just, you know, my initial goal was to want it. Yeah. And then you got it. I was like, oh, yeah, no, you got it too. You're good. All right, perfect. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to uh, to win that in over overtime. Dude, but it, it was damn close. Um, five key moments done. Before everyone leaves, though, I asked them a few questions. Uh, number one for you, Michael, is would you change anything about your gameplay? Um... I mean, it's just being a bit more precise with certain things, making certain decisions that I might panic on that, you know, that's one of the things I've really been trying to change. Other than that, it's just probably maybe take a bit more lighthearted than what I do. Okay. All right. And then number two, this is my favorite question in the whole series. Overall, are you happy with the decisions that you made? In general, yeah, I think it's just a bit of mechanical, you know, for all the ones I did poorly on. It's just 
small difference of mechanical brilliance. You know, if I'm just a bit better at pulling my break a bit, but you know, less, I could have made the second or third key moment a bit more threatening. The one where I was challenging him. Mm-hmm. You know, I could have had a better shot on net here and made it so that I didn't have to threaten your positioning for it. You know, just a little bit of small things that it's mostly mechanical that I have problems with. You know, f- mental. I'm quite happy with all the decisions I made in this game. Perfect. Uh, Michael, dude, you're an, an incredibly intelligent player. Uh, dude, it, it's a blast playing with you. Is there anything you want to talk about? Anything that you want to plug? Any social media? Any causes? Anything that comes to, dear to your heart? Um. Well, I'm thinking about doing some YouTube soon. Just kind of showing a lot more of how I play and how I get around all my obstacles. Don't have all that much social media, so... Okay. Nothing at the moment. All right. Well, as oh, soon as wait, hold on, very important. Psionics, just give me the number one cripple in the NA title. You know. Psionics, please. You gotta help us out here for sure. As soon as that YouTube's up, man, I'm gonna be in contact with you. We're gonna make sure that's down in the description below. Other than that, for everyone else, Michael, you were amazing. I'm gonna give everyone my key thoughts here in one second. Let's jump into some final thoughts. But before we do, one more time, Michael, thank you. I had a great time playing with you. But why we're here, final thoughts, says right above me. Number one, play smart. Michael breaks down key moment number five in its entirety before he even watches that back in the replay. You want to get to that point where you are thinking about the game to an advanced level of what you're going to be a few steps in advance. Number two, we heard it himself. He's saying that he wants to hit Collegiate Rocket League. Be aspirational. If there's something you want, find a way to make it happen. Go do it. And then number three, Psionics, come on. Give him that best in NA Cripple title. But most importantly, for someone like Michael, with his situation, he's incredibly positive. And that's the biggest thing to take away. If you're having a bad day when you're playing ranked, don't be. You're going to get better. Everyone is going to get better as time goes on. And I believe in you. And Michael sure did believe in me. So, on that note, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below about absolutely anything and everything that you want to talk about. I promise I'm going to reply to comments. And then subscribe if you want to see more. I know I'd appreciate that. Take care.